Good. So, we will uh, continue from last class. So, last class we looked at the well growth curves, right? So, what is the well growth curve? So, we plot a well and a diameter as a function of current or time, okay? And then we can identify the I max and then the critical diameter required for the engineering application. So, we looked at I t as a function of uh, well and a di diameter, okay? So, generally the curve uh, goes like this, a typical uh, application. So, we can identify the maximum current for a given time. So, that is I max. So, I max determines the expulsion, condition for expulsion or splashing, okay. And then, I know, uh, 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 guidelines uh, uh, for the automotive industries generally says that the well naked diameter should be four times the square root of thickness, okay. That is the ideal well naked diameter. So, I mean, it can, you can expect. So, you can identify from the well growth curves. So, what is the critical current and then time needed? to achieve the required level negative diameter, right? Okay. So, why is it important? Because the mass effect M. So, the mass effect determines the, the heat energy needed to form a given well negative diameter, is not it? So, the M is related to Cp and then again, so M is related to the uh, mass and the density and volume, right? So, we can identify by uh, identifying uh, the Q, then we can also calculate I n t. So, that is the relationship. And we also looked at some geometrical uh, 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 dis, uh, the advantages, disadvantages of the resistance pot welding. So, what is the minimum distance needed between two wells? So, the S is the distance between two wells in a overlap joint. So, generally when you have an uh, overlap distance of uh, L, okay. okay. So, if this is L, the overlap distance. So, what is the distance at which you will have to place the well, right? So, generally that is an L by 2, okay? So, you will have to place the wells half a distance uh, between the overlap, total overlap distance. And distance between two wells, the S, that is also very critical because, so if you keep it too close, then you may also have shunting, okay? So, shunting we will see in this class, what is shunting and then why it is, you know, problematic and why it is important to analyze the minimum distance so that you do not have a shunting effect, okay. So, the distance between two wells also critical in terms of uh, structural stability, right. So, when you are, when the, when the design is considered for an automotive industry, so they also look at uh, detailed structural analysis, okay, so to see the how uh, the, the member is uh, be, uh, behaving under a load, static and dynamic load and they do an stress analysis to identify where exactly they can place the weld, okay, so by considering the shunting effect. Okay, so, the S and L, uh, we can get it uh, for uh, varying thicknesses, varying materials uh, and then I showed you in a table which you can be referred for a common engineering alloys. So, for a detailed case, for example, if you want to identify what is the L and S, you will have to do an, a complete structural analysis using an, an, an FEM. So, generally it is done for automotive component when they conceive the design, they do an, an elaborate structural analysis. Okay, so, they think about the designs. So, when they, are, when they also conceive the design and they keep in mind that which welding forces they are going to use because in a resistance pot welding, the disadvantage is the accessibility. Both electrodes should be reaching to the same spot, okay. Suppose if you have a complicated geometry, some sort of a curvy geometry, then you cannot reach the spot from top and bottom, is not it? So, the, the design consideration involves what welding process they are going to use it for the component. For a spot welding, you need to always have an access in top and bottom, is not it? Otherwise, you cannot make a spot weld. So, the, the design analysis when they are uh, conceiving for a component fabrication in automotive industry, so they consider all the aspects, not only the, the stress analysis, they also look at the accessibility for the electrodes to reach the same spot, right? It is clear. So, this is what we looked at in last class. So, we look at in this class some of the testing met methods they use for spot welding, resistance spot welding, right. And then we will see some of the definitions of some parameters which is used to def define the quality of the weld, the mechanical property of the weld, right. So, and then we will move on to the some of the uh, problems you may face in resistance spot welding, right. It is clear. So, any questions so far in last class? Okay. Then, good. So, we will move on. So, the, the common testing methods uh, the, 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 uh, we follow 
to qualify resistant spot weld is uh, these three. So, if you look at uh, the, 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 the sample geometry is what uh, I have placed here. So, this is a simple tension, right. So, this is in a, in a simple tension test. So, what do we do in this case? So, there is a spot well, right. So, we make a spot well of an, uh, two plates in overlap configuration, the same configuration I have been talking about, okay. So, this is the most common configuration we use for spot well and overlap, right. And then, uh, so uh, upon making a samples, we fix that in, in a tensile testing machine, okay, and then pull it in tension and identify load required to break this bond apart, okay. And uh, in this process, we uh, uh, identify what is the maximum strength this interface, the, the well can withstand, okay. So, in this case, uh, so generally it is a shear strength because even if you are pulling it up, so the interface will, uh, will up undergo a shear uh, loading, okay. So, we identify shear strength, okay, generally as a function of well nugget diameter, okay, well diameter. And this will follow the similar strand as a current arc. Uh, so, its shear strength can also be replaced, okay, uh, with the elongation as well, okay. So, generally we plot the shear strength as function of well diameter and identify the what well diameter obviously gives the best strength, right. And apart from strength, and they, we also look at uh, some other uh, important parameters in spot weld. Because when you are deforming such a, such a member, you are applying load in almost in, in all the parts of the, this component. For example, this is your sample, when you are applying a load, the load is applied in all the places, is not it, right. So, when you are measuring ductility, you are not measuring ductility of the weld, you are measuring ductility of the, the entire sample, is not it, right. So, in order to uh, identify what is the, the actual uh, the property of the weld, Apart from the strength and the ductility, we also look, look at the plug ratio, okay. Right. So, what is the plug ratio? So, plug ratio we measure after the failure whether the well nugget is intact or not, okay. So, suppose if you look at two samples after failure in this case. Okay, sample A and then sample B. Right. So what I show you here is the 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 samples after subjecting them into ten, tensile testing. Okay, it's not pure tensile, but the the cross tension test. But anyway, so not explain the plug ratio. You can refer this figure. So what you see over here is this is the cross section, and this is the top view of the weld. Right. And if you look at the cross section in this case, the top image this image. So, you see that, so this is the well nugget after failure, you see the failure has happened from the interface and then once the crack uh, reached the, the middle of the well nugget and then it deviated and then failed vertically, is not it. So, if you look at the plug, so this is the, the fusion boundary of the well, is not it, prior fusion boundary uh, of the well. So, when you are testing it up, so, crack nucleated and then the interface opened up and then ultimately the crack deflected and then it cracked like that, right. So, in this case, some amount of weld is still intact, is not it? Some fraction of weld is intact, right? And we call that as a plug, right? So, we measure the plug size, right? So, the plug size can be measured, the plug size after testing over in the initial well nugget diameter, okay, and that is known as plug ratio. So, plug ratio we measure by measuring the plug size after welding. So, it is like you have a button, okay, you pull it apart. If button is intact, what is what is the plug size? It is 1 because the plug size is the same as a well nugget diameter. Say 
the image over here in this case. You see, in this case, the failure has happened from the fusion boundary is deflected. You see that plug is more or less intact, is not it? Yes or no? So, the entire plug is opened up. You see, the, the bottom plate it is a hole, the entire weld actually it is intact sticking to the one of the plates, is right? So, plug ratio here is the weld angle diameter divided by the plug size, the plug size divided by weld angle diameter. That means that in this case 1, okay. So, so obviously during this test if the plug is intact what does it mean? The weld did not fail. The failure has happened elsewhere in the base material or heat affected zone, okay. So, apart from the strength it is also important to understand the plug ratio, okay. So, so when you are measuring the mechanical properties of the resistance spot weld, it is important to understand not only the strength of the weld because strength of the weld if you look at in this test, it is a function of even base material, is not it? So, base material is also contributing to the, the actual uh, uh, the, the strength. So, that is not a clear indication about the weld property. So, in order to identify the, 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 the quantify the weld properties clearly, so we also measure the strength required to the to break the joint, but this break can also happen in elsewhere, is not it in the base material. So, but then that is not real identification weld metal property, okay. So, we identify the strength required to, to break anywhere plus the plug size, right. So, both combined would give us the mechanical properties, okay. If a, if a plug ratio is 0, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah. So, that means that the interface has completely failed, okay. That means that you have a situation what you had before welding, is not it? Complete, complete interface failure. So, if uh, both the plates comes apart after testing, what does it mean? That means that the complete interface failure, okay. If plug ratio is 0 means your weld is completely failed at the interface. So, you will have a complete interface failure. So, you will you will just take a part of the interface, is not it? So, the that means that you have an interface failure, is clear? So, apart from the strength, the guidelines would also specify, so what is the minimum plug ratio you should have in order to qualify the weld. So, generally the, uh, the uh, weld qualification dictates that um, at least 80 percent plug ratio you should have or 0.8. That means that the weld is not that brittle, the interface is not really segregated, it has an, an brittleness at the weld center line. So, if weld center line is completely embrittled, what happens when you are applying load? It will open, is not it? Complete interface failure will happen, right? It is clear. So, we will have to identify the strength plus the failure mechanism in order to quantify the weld metal properties of the resistance part weld, right? So, we do it in, a, in, a, in generally the three ways. So, one is a simple uh, tension test, okay. There are some problems uh, because you know if the load applied it is not applied directly under the weld. So, people have devised uh, some other uh, methodology for example, in this case it is known as uh, the, uh, the cross tension test. So, in this case we make sure that you know some the majority of the load you are applying it is applied to the, the weld. Okay, so, you make an, a cross samples, there are some standards you can, uh, there are uh, controlled. So, you make a weld in the such and setup and then you apply a tensile load. For example, you pull the top intention and similarly bottom intention, okay. So, in that case, you also uh, make sure that the load is concentrated majority the load at the, the weld and you identify the strength required to pull this interface apart, is not it? And then you also can calculate because this is this will be slightly more accurate than in this in order to quantify the weld because the whatever load you apply, because from the load only you are going to measure the strength. So you can identify the the, the strength of the weld. Okay, is clear. So plus the strength you also identify the plug ratio. Right, it's clear. So if both are matching, then the weld can be qualified. It's clear. So, the, 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 the cross tension test is very commonly used in industry to test the mechanical property of the weld. 
and apart from cost and test you can also do a tensile shear L tensile shear and this is simple to do okay because in this case you will have to make uh, such a geometry sample and machine it and then uh, you will have to do and this is very simple. So, you bend it you make an L flange okay and then attach make a spot well at the middle of this L is not it and then you pull in, in, a, in a tensile testing machine pull it apart and then identify the, the load required to uh, break the, uh, the in either interface or elsewhere. Okay, so, the failure happens somewhere over here okay, that is best is not it. So, the weld is better than uh, the best material then the welders will be happy right. So, if, uh, you, if a failure happens at the interface obviously, the weld is in a brittle and it is uh, uh, not acceptable. So, the same way in this test also we will identify the strength required to uh, cause a failure and identify the plug size after the failure if a flux size is, uh, uh, is, is same as the well nugget diameter that means that plug ratio is 1 that is the ideal case you can achieve is not it because the failure did not happen at the well the failure happened elsewhere yes it is clear. So, these three are the common uh, 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 testing methodologies uh, are used for uh, quantifying the mechanical properties of the wells. So, the simple tension the cross tension test or tensile uh, shear in tension right it is clear okay. So, then we uh, plot graphs like this again if you change the thickness obviously the well nugget size can also change for a given current. So, in order to quantify uh, the, the mechanical properties we will have to measure it varying thicknesses. So, in this graph I plotted uh, uh, 3 thicknesses 2.54 and 1.91 and 1.21 and then well nugget diameter okay. So, obviously when the well nugget size change it changes the, the uh, tensile shear force also changes because if you are making in a larger well diameter. So, obviously, you need to give more load to failure is not it is obvious, but if you are keep on increasing dial diameter uh, then after uh, uh, critical diameter you may not change of course, you will also have an I max is not it and then you will have a failure uh, by the splashing then the properties I mean you cannot form an a well nugget. So, ideally so that is why so for example, in this case 2.54 mm and you have an, uh, 1 diameter that gives the maximum strength right. So, after that you know you may also have uh, uh, an, uh, severe cavity formation or indentation formation because of the more amount of liquid is there and you may also have a surface depression. So, if you look at it in, a, in, a, in the well case okay. So, you may also have a depression. So, because material becomes really softened if you have a large amount of liquid. So, there is a critical diameter upon which you know you may not really increase the strength. So, that is why generally the that diameter is 4 by square root of thickness yes it is clear. So, we identify from these curves plus the well growth curve. So, well growth curve will give us so what current and time we may get uh, the required diameter right and then we uh, measure the strength as a function of the diameter and then we identify. So, what is the precise current and time we may have to use to identify the, the maximum strength containing weld right and then simultaneously we will also measure the plug ratio. So, you may also have a, a very good strength at that point if the plug ratio is, low, low, is lower here than here. So, then we may still consider this is not it. So, we can have a compensation for loss in strength with the good better mechanical properties with the very high plug ratio right it is clear yes or no good. So, these kind of curves uh, the, the, the measurements are carried out for each thickness for a given composition because if you change the thickness so obviously, the mass effect would influence the well nugget diameter right that, that will influence the current and time. So, that is how we generate the properties. So, we identify well nugget diameter the ideal well nugget diameter which gives the, the maximum strength and uh, acceptable plug ratio right it is clear yes or no. So, this is how we qualify the, the spot weld 
right good. So, this I already explained. So, how do you measure the plug ratio? So, plug ratio is measured right. So, by measuring the plug size after the failure is not it and then taking a ratio between the welding diameter over the plug ratio uh, at the plug size after welding we measure the plug ratio right it is clear and then we can plot plug ratio as a function of welding diameter or even current ok so current or time or welding diameter and then identify if a plug ratio is always 100 percent. So, times 100 is not it or 1 according to this equation. So, then that means that it is a, the best condition you can explain and then you can identify which diameter gives the maximum strength period and then identify what current and time you have to use to achieve that well neck diameter and that you can identify from the well growth curves. Well growth curves are plotted as a function of current time as a function of well neck diameter. Yes, it is clear. So, this is how uh, we measure the mechanical properties of the resistance part well. So, plug ratio is important. So, it is plug size after failure divided by the well neck diameter. So, if the interface failure, so how did how did you know the interface failure look? For example, in this case, if there is a complete interface failure, then you will have failure here and this would have been gone is not it in the cross section that means that the interface has become the same as it was before and this could happen when you have a very brittle uh, uh, alloying elements segregating at the well center line ok. For example, say case like this. So, you have an uh, um, uh, material strength, the base material strength as a plotted function of strength and if you have a high strength material obviously, to increase the strength you add a lot of alloying elements is not it carbon is increased is not it you also add silicon or aluminum or phosphorus. So, the material becomes very brittle. So, obviously, when you add a more amount of carbon, carbon segregates to the uh, solidifying liquid and then well central line becomes an enriched in uh, alloying elements like in carbon then you may end up having a interface failure is not it. So, interface failure means there is no plug at all you see this in this case the complete interface failure whereas, material uh, with the low strength you do not have much uh, amount of alloying elements uh, as for, for example, uh, iron with an, uh, 0 0.01 percent carbon pure iron. So, the segregation is not that severe compared to the high strength alloys which has a lot of alloying elements phosphorus and carbon and you see this plug, plug is intact is not it. So, this is a plug, uh, full plug failure where the plug ratio is 1 right and if you increase the strength. So, obviously, the plug ratio decreases you see that becomes a partial plug and then you have a full interface failure right it is clear and why is it changing because in, in a conventional steels and if you want to increase the strength of the steel obviously, you have to add alloying elements is not it. So, alloying elements can segregate and then make the well center line brittle and then if you are failing if you are pulling it <coughs> obviously. So, I already showed you right the notch effect is not it. So, if you have segregation at the well center line because that is a region which only face at the end if a crack propagates and, and then uh, completes then you will have a, a interface failure right it is clear. So, for ideal case if you want to have a plug ratio is 1. So, you will have to have a failure somewhere over here is not it. So, the cracks would propagate and then fail somewhere here that means that you have a plug intact something like this. So, in this case the failure has happened far away from the fusion boundary is not it. So, that is why you have a plug intact a full plug. And then uh, you can also identify the strength from the test. It's clear. How is it working? How do you qualify? Uh, 